G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. Today we are going to do our power rankings. It's been a little while since I've done a power rankings and therefore it's a little bit more interesting. There's been a lot of different form lines intersecting, teams that you thought you could pigeonhole into being, you know, in the bottom part of the ladder, surging and vice versa. Teams that I thought were contenders that are in a horrific run of form and it's made a very interesting ranking or at least my attempt at a ranking. So when you consider what a power ranking is, I think early in the season, it's almost like trying to make a real ladder. You know, when, when teams haven't played the same quality of teams, like in the early rounds, you're trying to, you know, construct a ladder that really reflects the quality of teams in order. As the season goes on, you've got the actual ladder now. So what does the power rankings really reflect? Well, it reflects current form more so than it did at the start of the year. I hope that makes sense. But when you, if you do the power rankings after round five and you did it based on the first five rounds of the season, you've essentially just got what the ladder suggests. So I think what power rankings at least mean in my head has changed over the course of the season. At the end of the day, it's all arbitrary, it's all subjective, and I'll, I'll try and give you my rankings and justify it as best as I can. So, we like to start from the bottom up here at True Footy Enterprises, and I'll give you my bottom three. I've got West Coast probably as the 18th seed right now on current form. I don't think they'll finish last, but if you consider their last five, it probably makes sense. I've got North Melbourne just leapfrogging them, and Richmond with an improved three weeks, I would say, up there in 16th. Now, it's pretty hard to split these bottom three teams, I think these are clearly the bottom three teams on quality. Richmond's, you know, if you look at their last five, it started horrifically with a couple of huge losses. And then, you know, in the last three weeks, some really good performances, you know, playing at German HBA and winning at halftime, falling two goals short in the Dreamtime game and then beating Adelaide away. I mean, West Coast went to Adelaide Oval and lost by 100 points. So I couldn't justify that ranking. West Coast do have a win over Melbourne in the last five, but I would say it's been particularly poor around that. Big loss to Collingwood, a huge loss to Adelaide, losing at home to St Kilda and of course North Melbourne who leapfrog West Coast on the basis that they just beat them there in Perth. So I couldn't really justify having West Coast there. Like I said, I do still believe West Coast will finish high higher than the other two teams, as is the current ladder, but that's the way I rank it on current form. Then I got two teams almost in their own group, Adelaide as the fourth worst team, and then St Kilda after that, which again, that does actually reflect the current ladder position. If you look at the last five, Adelaide's last five have been a bigger mixed bag than just about any other team in the competition. They've had one win, three losses, and a draw. Their draw at home was against a decent Brisbane Lions side, who I know are not ranked highly, but you know they're still a good team on their day, so I kind of give them a tick for a solid performance there. Then they had a 100-point win over the Eagles. Around that, they lost to the Hawks somewhat poorly. They played well against the Pies and lost, and they lost at home to Richmond. So I think that justifies them as the next worst side. And St Kilda have won two of their last three. They've had a bad loss to the Demons, the Dockers, and the Hawks. And they've beaten West Coast away, and they've beaten the Gold Coast Suns at Marvels. They're probably just the next rung up. So the next group of teams is the interesting one, because I think all three of these teams should be in September, in theory. I mean, it's a, there's a log jam this year. But if we're ready to get on current form, these three teams have all only won one of their last five, and to different extents have played some average footy. So I actually think Melbourne is the next worst side in the competition right now. And they're only ahead of St Kilda because they beat them in the last five. But they lost to West Coast, they lost to Carlton, they lost to Fremantle horrifically. And you know another very average performance against Collingwood puts them as the next worst side. I've got Geelong above that, who save for a dominant second half against Richmond, I mean, it was a chance it would be 0-5 right now. Nonetheless, they beat Richmond, but they lost to the Power at home. They lost to the Giants at home. They lost badly to the Gold Coast Suns and they lost to Sydney. And strangely, the Sydney performance might've been their best of the lot. Above that, I've got GWS. Uh, again, another team that's only won one of their last five. They're higher than Geelong because they beat them at GMHBA, but they've lost to the Swans, Bulldogs, Bombers, and Hawks. And to be fair, those four opponents are actually going pretty well at the moment in contrast to you know some of the teams below them that have lost to some average teams. I guess you'd say Geelong's losses in the last five haven't been horrific or against bad teams, but either way, GWS beat them, so they just retain that higher spot. Then we've got a glut of three more teams that I kind of find it hard to separate, but each of these teams have won three of their last five. So in 10th, I've got the Gold Coast Suns, I've got the Western Bulldogs in 9th, and I've got the Brisbane Lions in eighth spot. So starting with Gold Coast, they won three of their last five against North Melbourne, Geelong, and the Bombers, and they lost to St Kilda most recently and the Blues in that time as well. So that 
probably puts them below the Bulldogs, maybe. I mean, the Bulldogs have beaten Collingwood, albeit a depleted Collingwood. They beat the Giants as well, away from home. That's solid enough. And then a big win over Richmond. You can only beat the teams in front of you, and they beat them by nearly 100 points. They lost to the Lions most recently, and that justifies having Brisbane ahead of them. And their other loss was against the Swans, who are clearly the best team in the competition. As for the Lions, they've only lost one of their last five, and that was against a Hawthorne side that's you know in red-hot form. They drew with the Crows, and they also beat the Dogs most recently, and the Tigers and the Suns in that time. So that just justifies having them ahead of the Western Bulldogs and Gold Coast. So then I have another group of four teams that are somewhat hard to separate. In particular, the next two. We'll start with Essendon in seventh and Fremantle in sixth. I find it hard to separate these two teams. And it's kind of a little bit more an eye test. So Fremantle has won three of the last five, as have Essendon, but Fremantle have the one loss, having drawn with Collingwood. Both of these teams, funnily enough, have drawn with Collingwood this year. I just feel maybe on the eye test, I think Fremantle's had a better run of five games in terms of the impressiveness. You know, the big win over Melbourne. They beat the Saints and the Tigers. They did have a horrible loss to Sydney, albeit, again, probably emotional circumstances, that one. Essendon, by contrast, have won three games, but, you know, just beat the Tigers. They didn't put away North that badly. They did beat the Giants. Again, the Giants aren't in great form. Not knocking Essendon too bad. I don't think they're doing too much wrong. Even their losses have been okay. You know, I thought there was a lot to like about the Carlton game, even though, you know, they'd be frustrated with it. They were still doing some things right. And they nearly beat the Suns at Metricon, and, you know, no team has done that this year. So they're going all right. I just think Fremantle are probably a touch more impressive. Then I've got Hawthorne in fifth. And they've won four of their last five. There's only Carlton, who have also won four, and Sydney, who have won five, that have gone better in that stretch of games. So their wins have been over St Kilda, the Brisbane Lions, the Adelaide Crows, and the Giants. And their one loss was against the Power in a game that they probably shouldn't have lost, given the circumstances of what was it, like a minute and a half to go, maybe less, where they had a two-goal lead and, uh, you know, very close to going 5-0. and oh. So I have Port Adelaide ahead of them, and the reason, the justification is, even though Port have won only three of the last five, they did beat Hawthorne in that time, so I didn't feel right about flipping that. The Powers wins have been over Hawthorne, as they suggested. They beat the Cats at Gem HBA, they beat North Melbourne, and they did have two pretty average losses against Carlton and the Crows. And like I said, they've done some things well in their last five, and one of those is beating Hawthorne, hence why they're still the fourth best team in the comp. And it doesn't feel like Port Adelaide are going that well, to be honest, but you consider the form around them. There's a log jam, teams going up and down. Port Adelaide probably still retain fourth spot. Then I think the top three might just be in their own group for now. There's not a huge gap, but I have Collingwood in third. They've won three of their last five with one draw. Now, with power rankings, I try not to give an injury excuse. Otherwise, it would skew the ladder too much. You'd have Richmond probably much higher for a start. So I ignore injuries, and I, I realize that they have injuries, and I still think they're a premiership contender, but probably just not quite gone as well as Carlton in their last five with one loss against the Bulldogs and a draw against Fremantle and they've beaten West Coast, Adelaide and Melbourne most recently. Carlton have won four of their last five with one loss against the only team ranked higher than them. They've beaten the Demons, they've beaten the Suns, they've beaten the Power and they've beaten the Bombers and they beat the Power away from home as well. So as far as form lines go, Carlton's probably second only to Sydney who, surprise, surprise, retained top spot in the Power rankings having won all of their last five and gee, their win streak must be eight or nine by now. But all of their wins so far have been fairly comfortable. You know, the Cats most recently, they beat the Dogs, they beat the Blues, they beat the Dockers, they beat the Giants in that last five. So not really too much debate about who goes number one. But that's my attempt at a power rankings, guys. Let me know in the comments what you agree with and disagree with. You know, like I said, this is arbitrary and subjective. Um, there's no like objective rules for how to do a power ranking. So I'm sure we're all going to have different perspectives. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.